the strain and stress that change creates, I believe, has to be acknowledged and balanced by what we might call res resilience or agility or work-life balance and the whole movement that's going on right now, which I think is a complete reaction to the strain and stress that people have been experiencing. Meditation, yoga, uh, natural foods, you know, the desire to get out in nature. People are exploding in those areas because we need to be able to give the brain a time to relax and to rebuild and to catch up with the speed of change. There's this quote that you've heard of before, which is the speed of change right now is as slow as it's going to be for the rest of our lives. So therefore, and isn't that true? we have to be able to train the brain to be able to, to speed up its change ability, but at the same time, balance out the um, taking care of ourselves during all of that. You know, we have to be able to create that space. There's a, a great book by a guy named Tony Schwartz that wrote, um, what was it called? Tony Schwartz wrote The Powerful Engagement, did a great study regarding performance relative to business, relative to the sports environment. What we do in business is we don't ever rest. We, in fact, it's a badge of honor to work ourselves almost to death. The Chinese, the Japanese, Japanese, Japanese have yes. a, yeah, they have a term that says, basically, you, you kill yourself through work, right? And we, in a sense, are not that far behind. And, and we wonder why we have engagement problems. We wonder why people are moving on to other companies. But on the other hand, when you take a look at performance in professional sports, they actually have built in the recovery, the repair, the relaxation, the, the rest period in their whole system of performance. It's not separate, it's part of. And I remember once you said, this was very telling many years ago, that I wasn't taking vacations for years. And you finally said, Vacations have to happen twice a year. We're going to take at least a week off each time. <laughs> and it's because it had to be seen as a business activity for me. Absolutely. And otherwise, I wouldn't probably do it because I was always driving for whatever I was driving for. And now vacations are, are a normal part of our life, but it's also a part of the business life because it's needed. It's that repair. It's that refreshing. It's that rest. And it's where often creativity and innovation and new ideas come from while we're walking around, you know, the Champs-Élysées or having a glass of wine in Italy. Those ideas come during that time of rest, during that time of, of openness that happens and you can't create that when you're working so fast. Absolutely. And the other piece is a change of, uh, change of location, yes. a change of environment. Because often what we know ends up pulling us right back into um, whatever path we we walk the most. Yeah, the triggers, like when we did that right. event uh, a couple of weeks ago, the team was so glad to be just out of the office in a neutral environment because yes. they weren't being triggered by all of those touch points that says, oh, I remember this business issue that I gotta take care of because I'm in the space where that business issue lives. And so they have to get back into it. So you go for a break and everyone runs upstairs and does emails, comes back and you wonder why they're not focused. You know, that's why getting people off site is such an important part. And that piece is setting yourself up for success. That speaks directly in my mind to setting yourself up for success. Just like taking vacations sets yourself up for success because you rest, you recuperate, you play. Play is a huge piece. People need to find their version of play and Practice, it's a practice. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous, but it's a practice. We don't play anymore because we're adults. Well, it's like that, you know, the TED talk that I did and you helped me create that was around, well, how do you then really develop a stronger understanding and application of your intuition? And corny as it may sound, there was, you know, presence. Yes. Meaning we need to be able to have a practice and an intentionality to be in the moment which is something that people don't spend much time at. Most life's biggest wonderful moments happen when you're in the moment, you know, when, versus when you're thinking about the future and going for the past. So be in the moment. And the second one is uh, purpose, which is what's your driving force, where you're heading, what's the intent, what's your, what's your calling, whatever that might be. And then the last one, as you said, is play. 
we have to do this with a sense of lack of seriousness and absolutely and uh, fun and humor. Otherwise, it's not play. Yeah, I mean, it, really. But it, it's it's the it's the lubricant, if you will, to make intuition happen. Is it's it's like there's not it's it's a sense that it's iterative. It's it's a um, you don't overthink it. Yeah, yeah, right. Like I was just doing right now. <laughs> <laughs>